take two. I decided to start over because I'm least here now. Um, U.S. history, Cold War lesson. Um, for HIPAA reasons, you won't be able to see the kids. They're back there. Say hi. 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 If you don't say hi, so hi. Okay. Thank you. Um, and you got your binder? All right. Let's get started. Um, guys, just make sure, no matter what, you do not walk in front of this camera. Because if, like, you can walk in front of the camera if you want, it's not a big deal, but the kids can't. It's a HIPAA thing. All right. Fair enough. All right. I stapled this all together. I know it looks big and scary, but it's not. I uh, I really was just trying to save um, time and paper. I don't walk in front of the camera. Walk right back here. I'm just gonna be a barrier. So don't see. It. Thank you. So Mike just came in the room. So we got four students present and my other teaching assistant. All right. What's this? What's this? No, he can be seen. It don't matter if he's supposed to see. Um, so guys, don't even start reading it yet. Don't worry about the packet. Just ignore it. Um, we're not starting at this very moment. What we're going to start is just ask ourselves some questions. Um, some of this should be repeat because we've done some of this lesson before. That's your problem. Hold on. Sorry. I'm just recording, so. Um, we've done some of this lesson before, so a lot of it's going to be, uh, not a lot of it, the first part of it's going to be repeat, but it's good repeat because this is going to be a theme that's going to come up on your Regents exam. Um, the main point of emphasis that I want to focus on today that we didn't get to before is the primary source document on the Truman Doctrine. Okay? All right. So, let's work as a group. We don't have to break up and do like think pair shares and inquiry in groups because we're pretty much a small group already. So, we're already broken up in a group. What was the Cold War? That's the first question. Um, Michael. Um, the Cold War was, uh, it wasn't really a war, but it was like a stand-up between the U.S. and the Soviet Union right after World War II, because we came out of... All right, hold on. Pause, pause, pause. Very good. So that's big information, though. It's not really a war. What do you mean by that? What do you... Hold on one second, Michael. No bloodshed. No um, bloodshed. That's not... Totally true, but it's definitely not World War One or World War Two. Um, you know, that's kind of a, a, a popularly held notion about the Cold War that there was no blood, uh, bloodshed. There was no major confrontation between the two powers that were supposed to be fighting, which was who, Michael? Um, Soviet Union and uh, uh, the United States. Good. What do we call the Soviet Union today? USSR or Russia? Russia. But Vladimir Putin calls it the Russian Federation. Make it sound a little bit more fancy. Um, good. So we know it's a war that was not directly fought, but was fought through what's called proxy wars. You guys know what a proxy war is? Isn't it with like many different other battles? Kind of. If I take Mr. Lewis and Mr. D, and I put them in this room and I say, you guys got to fight and only one person's going to win, you know, a lot of things are probably going to get destroyed in this room, right? I mean, it's two, like, really big guys. Um, what we could do instead is just have, you know, a couple of the kids from Miss Rosica's room duke it out, right? So, Mr. Lewis has his little kid from Miss Rosica's room. Mr. D has his little kid, and they fight, and nobody gets too seriously hurt. Not powerful enough, right? So, proxy wars. We do that with Korea. You can't see it on the map right now. Okay. We do it with Vietnam. Um, because if the Soviet Union and the United States go to war, it could mean the end of the world as we know it, right? Good. So, number one is just a whole bunch of proxy wars? Um, well, number one, if for number one I want you to write, conflict between the United States and Soviet Union, I'll write it up here. Conflict between the United States and Soviet Union. Mike, I forgot to tell you, buddy, you got to move over there because I'm going to have to switch the camera view. Back here. Thanks, buddy. Perfect. Conflict between United States and USSR. Yep, USSR works too. 
You know what that stands for? For United um, Soviet no. United. No, we don't tell us. The United Soviet Socialist Republic. I think most communist regimes refer to themselves as a uh, republic. North Korea refers to themselves as a republic. We're a republic. Just to put that in perspective. They get lead to the main office. Lead to the main office. Marked by proxy wars and no direct confrontation. All right, I like that. I like that. That's a decent definition. We're not going to define all these. I just wanted to hit the big ones because the um, primary source document, you have to do a decent amount of reading for that. What is containment? Ooh, good question. We're going to get to that. What is containment? Containment is everything. There's perhaps no more important concept than containment than what we're discussing. Um, don't worry about question two, but we are going to worry about question three when you're done with that. And I want to keep it simple. This, even this definition here was a little bit too wordy, a lot wordier than I like, like them to be. So, buddy? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, where are you? Marked by proxy war. And then you're done. That's fine. Marked by proxy war. Is that good? Can I give an answer to number three? All right. Number three. What do you think the answer to number three is? And the question is, what was one major cause of world or of the Cold War? Um, wasn't it? Oh, because after we after the World War II, after the bombing of Nagasaki. We came out flexing our muscles, thinking about, oh, we're big, bad, tough. But then Soviet Union came out of World War II as a superpower, too. So then we started just going at it. Cause, like, we were wondering, we wanted to know who was the strongest. Yeah. I mean, most wars can be summed up as we want to know who the toughest is, right? We want to know who the strongest is. Um, you mentioned something kind of interesting. So we, we, we have to talk about World War II a little bit to properly lay the groundwork for the Cold War. The Soviet Union's job during World War II was to kill Nazis, and they were very good at it. They killed 75% of all the Nazis killed during World War II. They also incurred 90% of the casualties between them and the Germans. The Eastern Front was where the vast majority of people did their dying. Um, we, the arrangement we made, the United States and Britain was, we will mechanize you. We will provide you with vehicles. We will provide you with uh, um, you know, just different types of weapon systems. You just kill Nazis. So what that did was basically gave them a massive ground force. Their commanders were, yeah, yeah, thank you. Their commanders were commanding forces of literally millions of people, okay? And then the second statement you made, Mike, was you were asking about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Well, there's a lot of people that say, we didn't necessarily need to use the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We just have to use the Soviet Union because they had ground forces. What they think is that we were trying to flex our muscle to the Soviet Union. Well, There's a going. history with Japan and the Soviet Union. J they, Japan and Soviet Union went to war several times. They were our allies. Why would we try to? Weren't they our allies in, in the World War II? That's where it gets Soviet confusing. Union was our allies. So right. Why would we? Why would we want to show them? Like, but it was communism or like exactly. So. Literally one year after World War II, the people that were our greatest enemies became better allies to us than the Soviet Union, who was our ally during the war. Um, Michael hit the nail on the head. The answer to number three is the difference between communism and capitalism. Communism is, uh, uh, can't, like, uh, yeah, no, they can take over. It's like, it's like a dictatorship, but it's, um, they don't have somebody that, um, Kind of. I wish that we, um, I wish you guys watched Game of Thrones. Oh, there's I, a good example. So, thank you. 
Oh, you do watch it? Did you watch the season finale? Did you actually watch the season finale, or are you just making that face? No, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. So, um, it's a great example of how the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And, um, you know, Adolf Hitler probably didn't fancy himself a bad guy. Because he thought in his, in his head he was a good guy. Mm -hmm. He knew he should cleanse the world of infidels or uh, right. Jews. When Daenerys Stormborn is burning down um, the city of Westeros, she's not considering her, herself to be evil. She, th she thinks what she's doing is right. She, she feels justified in what she's doing because it's for the greater good. It is. It's a, it's Daenerys, it's a, it's a the show Game of Thrones. The season finale happened last night. And, you know. So, um, yes, the, the major source of conflict, the cause of Cold War is the difference between communism and capitalism. So the major cause was communism. Communism versus capitalism. I don't say that to an actual communist because they'll get really mad. <laughs> because um, Joseph Stalin is not a good representative of what communism is supposed to be. Communism and what? Communism versus capitalism. Do we, don't we have capitalism? Yes. Those two systems, if done properly, cannot coexist. Now, it's not necessarily true for, for capitalism. Because, you know, I could sit here and I could preach to you guys all day about the glory of Karl Marx. And then when you guys graduate, I can say, hey guys, listen, we should really, we, we, we need to live as, as Marx and Engels wanted us to. Let's go start a communist uh, commune. They're all over the United States. And uh, what we'd have to do is we'd have to pay our taxes to the federal government, and then what's ever left over we could be communist with. Um, but communism, you, you can't really do capitalism within the system of communism. All right, good. So here's what I want you to do. And we already know the answer number four. I'm going to stop talking for a little bit. Feel free to pair up or work individually. I'll leave it to your discretion. Um, I want you to do primary source document one. So flip the page. Primary source document one. Of the DBQs. Now, I have been really easy on you guys thus far with DBQs. I've been giving you some stuff that is run through uh, Rewordify, which simplifies the language for you. And I've been selecting DBQs that are not wordy. Your Regents is coming up. And you will have wordy primary source documents that you have to sift through. Okay, so it's really important that we start trying on these, trying our best. So read primary source document one, and then you're gonna answer some of these questions. Oh, okay. So read primary source document one, and then answer the questions. And I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna look through right now, and I might eliminate a couple of the questions, because.
get a sesame chicken. She ate a She ate lunch bowls when they called her. Yeah, we're on the same time. How are you? Where did you go? I went to the store. I got some lunchables. Tell me the egg roll. Tell me the egg roll story after you do your reading. Good job. Keep going. I want to start going over this in the next five minutes, hopefully. Five ish. Answer any questions yet? No. All right, let's get working on that. I know you are. We are working on this, it's the primary source document on the Truman Doctrine. It's long and boring, um, but I'm trying to get them used to pack it with long, wordy uh, primary source documents in it for their upcoming regents exam. Good job, Cam. Did you do any, did you do any answers yet? Yes, two. Good job. Good man. Wait, you did 
two, two in, you answer two of them, you just did number two. Do you? Oh, yeah. Are there three questions in number two? Yeah, I, um, I don't know, it's just the way it wrote it. It's a little confusing. That's why I didn't want you to do them all, because it's a pretty long question. So, I... There's going to be... Your, your regions is going to look a lot like this. It's going to be... Or like I usually don't give you guys the packets, but you you know what I mean. It's a test, so it's going to be in packet form, and there's going to be big, long, wordy questions and stuff. It's so if I go this way? it's pretty hard. The U.S. Yeah, you can walk front camera. I just can't. I just can't have these kids. Oh. No, no, you good? Yeah, it's the HIPAA thing with the kids. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, let's take one more minute, guys. It's okay, Quan. I see you trying. I'm, I'm actually, I know it's a lot. It's a lot. On your channel, you'll probably get a bit too. I do. I wanted to see. Was this after World War II or was this before World War II? Oh, my God. I wanted to see if I wanted to choose the one because I think there's going to be times where that's going to be beneficial to you. I'm going to hold on. particular attention to the last sentence of that paragraph. I freaking record on an uneven table, so it looks like crap. It's like all crooked.